That's fine. I mean, these things are serving. Yeah, that's fine with me. I mean, I just have the office. I'm focusing on the mini store. I can pull out something. He did my mini store. He did that initial. And then, then there was Gentry. Yeah. Oh, okay. My daughter got involved. Yeah. We can give something to you. Mr. Buckeye sold me that 50 acres in 85. I already had much in the microwave. Right, 
Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Consent out for the other second. 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 All in favor? Aye. All right. 16A. The board to consider approval of draft lease agreement with the Steenhatcher River Chamber of Commerce for Mobile Hall located at the former Ideal Marina site in Steenhatcher, presented by our county administrator. The draft lease in your packet is a uh, draft that our county attorney prepared. Uh, we did ask for the Chamber of Commerce to, or the Steenhatcher River Chamber of Commerce to review. The only addition that they would like to make is basically a first right to renew the lease after the 20 year lease period. I made a motion to approve that contingent on the insertion of the first right of people. Okay. Honey. 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 Is a motion. Mm -hmm. Did you say? 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 Did on the passage of the resolution from the city of Stephen on the circuit of the city Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but on this, the note may need to be continued, and that's due to the ordinance was not <coughs> advertised. Correct. The ordinance was not advertised, so the ordinance will be. The resolution was advertised, but the ordinance was not. So the the initial plan was to hear both of these items during the same meeting. So because the ordinance was not advertised, obviously that was an oversight. The question is, do you want to take public comment on the resolution, which by the way is corrected and um, in front of you? And I, I don't know what the pleasure of the board is. And, and then since folks will be coming to the public hearing to discuss the golf cart ordinance at the next meeting, would do you want to take public comment at both meetings or just take it during this meeting? Obviously, there's no need to reduce the speed limit if the ordinance is not going to be adopted, which I don't see why it would not be. But that's why we tried to schedule it to have both of them during the same meeting. So I think we would listen to what folks have to say tonight and uh, maybe we will continue on and do our voting at the next meeting. If that's, I believe that's acceptable. That's sufficient to do. But, uh, I'd like to say if we hear, if we hear support of this Resolution. The resolution was advertised, correct? Yes. And so if, if we have favorable support for that, I would be in favor of see fit to move forward. So we have a resolution on the table. Do we have a motion to read? I have a motion. We have a motion to read the resolution by Tyler Coyne. Do we have a second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Really doesn't have a title. Now, okay. I've got here. All right. <laughs> where it's come to the attention of the Board of County Commissioners of Taylor County, Florida, the speed limit on the following described road needs to be set. Can you speak up, please? They can't hear me. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I thought I could speak pretty really loud. I'm going to speak real loud so you can hear me way in the back, okay? Okay. <laughs> Where well, it's come to the attention of the Board of County Commissioners of Taylor County, Florida, that the speed limit on the following described roads needs to be set, and whereas on the below <laughs> listed roads the speed limit shall be set as outlined below, therefore be it resolved by the Board of County Commissioners of Taylor County, Florida, that one, the speed limit on the following roads in St. Hatches is set at 25 miles per hour, 11th Street Northeast, 12th Street Northeast, I'm doing this the whole thing. Go ahead. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, 12th Street Southeast, 12th, 13th Street Northeast, 13th Street Southeast, 1st Avenue Southeast, 2nd Avenue Northeast, 2nd Avenue Northwest, 2nd Avenue Southeast, 
second street northwest, third avenue southeast, fifth street southeast, seventh street northeast, seventh street southeast, sixteenth street southeast, seventeenth street northeast, seventeenth street southeast, fourth avenue northeast, fourth avenue northwest, fifth avenue northwest, eighth street northeast, eighth street southeast, beach road northwest from second street northwest to steam hatchy row Roll off road northwest. Any resolution or posting of a different speed on set above described roads, which are different from the above, is hereby repealed. <coughs> and then it's got passed and adopted in regular session this blank day of blank 2023. Right. Everybody hear it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is a we do go ahead and pass this now or do it after the public hearing? What was your question? Do we need to go ahead and pass the resolution now or do it after the public hearing? Well, the people are here to speak first. Right. And so, support or against it. Yeah. So we do move it up to a public hearing now. And I will you know, reiterate that we do have some letters that were written prior in another meeting. And there's 18 letters. And without going back through and reading all those again, you know, basically those letters, I don't think we want to read all those the same ones over again, but I'll basically tell you what the letters are in favor. All those letters are in favor of changing the speed limit, reducing the speed limit to the 25 miles an hour to allow folks rather to be able to uh, ride their golf cart to the roll-off site. I think we do have four other letters that have not been read, and Mr. Wanda will read these to us. Uh, the first letter is from Pamela Fry and Timmy. It's L E G E R E, 502 Fifth Street Northwest in Steenhatchee. Good morning. I cannot make the meeting, but would love for you to take my opinion so my voice can be heard. Please just lower the speed limit to 25 miles per hour. There are so many golf carts, and we do go to the dump every Saturday on the golf cart and run up to the store. Not hurting anyone, the roads are bad, potholes everywhere, so just lower the speed limit to 25. The second letter is from Robert Hale, 1112 First Avenue Northeast and 113 White Lane in Steenhatchee. I also run the Florida Wood Bonefish Store in Steenhatchee. I am in favor of the proposed 25 miles per hour speed limit in Steenhatchee and extending same to roll off on Beach Road. I am also against privatization of any public right of way river accesses in Steenhatchee. The next letter is from Deb Childress and Josh and Miranda Martin, 230 Northeast Webb Lane, Steenhatchee. We are part-time residents of Steenhatchee, but soon to be full-time residents. When we come to spend our weekends, we park our vehicles, use our golf cart exclusively for transportation. We would love to see the speed limit reduced to 25, but don't take our golf cart privileges away from us. The big trucks pulling boats at 45 to 55 need to be restricted. I would love to be able to use my side-by-side -side Ranger in the hatch. I don't see any, it any different than a golf cart if there are speed limits. They are legal on the roads in Swanee. And the last letter is from Melanie Rolfs and Michael Zavison, 1403 2nd Avenue Southeast. To whom it may concern, I am a resident of Steenhatchee and I am in favor of the speed limit change to 25 miles per hour. There are many reasons I am in favor of lowering the speed limit. One reason is it will help make Steenhatchee more golf cart friendly. The second reason I am in favor is I am hoping it will help reduce the extreme high speeds on 2nd Avenue Southeast. There is not a need with, within Steenhatchee to go over 25 miles per hour. Feel free to contact me if you have any questions. That's it. All right, to the public hearing, and I uh, have several of them. Anybody probably wants to speak to the public at this time. Anyone from the public, would they like to come speak? Or anyone speaking, you will be allowed three minutes, so uh, we'll try to keep it. All right, we go. Yeah. My hands, same answer. 
Y'all let me. Y'all let me. Yes, is there anyone in here against it? No. Not a single person. This is how the town feels. That stuff you see on Facebook, those people don't even live in the scene action. They want to come to scene action, they want to burn up our roads. We don't want that. We want to be able to go to the dump. There's, if you read those letters that you've got right there, there's 18 of them. It's a necessity. <coughs> so, several of those people do not have a vehicle at all. Um, Mickey, uh, what's her name? Osteen. Osteen. That's all she's got. She wants to be able to go to the dump. That's what all of these people want to be able to do. They want the whole town over 25, which I'm in favor of. <coughs> Everyone here is in favor of that. That's all I got to say. Uh, thank you, sir. Yeah. I'll be quick. She was over a long time. She has to read it. Uh, speaks for itself. The resolution passes. It would have been nice to have both things here. It is what it is. I think hopefully the carryover of support for the right to go to roll off in the 25 mile hour. I'm the last business outside of town on the way to the roll off. Got a neighbor that's here with me. He's the last residence. I've witnessed it all the time at being having the many stories there. So I know how fast people are doing. I might be guilty of it too. I think all of us, but it'll be a good, great way uh, to correct it. People from Steenhatchee or the Steen, uh, Sugar Hill area there will be able to access the roll off. By the way, tonight when I was leaving Keaton Beach, I was here, but when you come into Keaton Beach from Perry, you hit 25. You go from 35 to 25. And that's a long stretch of road also. When you look ahead, you can almost see where the water company is up there. So it's, it's a long one. Uh, and now with the congestion of the new RV park where Bobby Dodd's place was, added to congestion, that's all the way to 6th Avenue. Okay, and uh, so I think we ought to carry it all the way. You know. Thank you. Thank you, sir. If you don't mind, I left something out. I talked to Sheriff Wayne Padgett, and he is in favor of opening it to the to the roll off. Anyone else? Hello, my name is Paul Reeves. I live right there at Beach Road, Royce Road. I'm the last house towards the roll off there. And uh, we're in favor of lowering the speed limit, but it only works if we get enforcement. If people are rolling in off that beach road, 60, 70 mile an hour right now, and it's 35. So going to 25, we've got to get the enforcement, otherwise somebody's going to get killed out there. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Kathy Goldenauer, and I'm a resident of Steenhatchee, and I've noticed there's a lot of people walking, and we don't have sidewalks in a lot of areas, and you see people flying up and down um, First Street, and people are walking in the grass there, and we have a lot of elderly people walking, so if we could drop it down to 25 and, you know, keep Steenhatchee a step back in time where we're a little bit chilled out and not moving so fast, I think it would behoove everybody, and I'm all for the golf carts. Thank you. Thank you for listening to me. I'm Shelly Jefferson. I'm the incoming commander for American Legion Post 291. Uh, out of our 303 active members that we have, a lot of them rely on their golf carts because they don't have any other means of transportation. And I think anybody in here will agree with that. And it's very important that we maintain the integrity that we've always had in Steenhatchee of our laid back community that was spoken of a moment ago. And to be able to support our veterans, our elderly, senior citizens, and people that don't have transportation. 25 miles an hour is great. We also need it out to the road. And I'm in favor of it. As Mike said, everyone else in here is too. And we appreciate your concern. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? <clears throat> Anyone else? Hello, everyone. My name is William 
and Martin. We live on 208 9th Street, Northeast. Is the road right next to Matt. And the trucks that are coming out of there and guys going to work are screaming. And sometimes they scream on the way back. So I'm very much in favor of this report. Thank you. Thank you, sir. My name is John Gernchuk. I've lived here in the steam hatchy for 11 years now. I live behind Jim Zerberg's mini storage on the corner of Coastal Oak Lane and 3rd Street Northwest. And gentleman just talked about speed of traffic on uh, Beach Road coming in. I get passed every day by somebody doing about 70. I'm not adjusted to the speed limits that are 55 to 45 to 35 to 25 around the sanctuary for steam hatchy. But I am upset about the golf cart community and a lot of the other four wheelers that go around. They drive on Highway State Highway 51. They're a nuisance, they're a pain. I don't think that we need to have 25 miles an hour throughout the town. For me to go all the way around at 25 miles an hour to the post office is about three miles and five miles to get up to the old dollar store where it used to be. I think the speed limits on, on the roads in town ought to stay the same. I think we need surveillance by our sheriff's department to try to catch people who are speeding. And I certainly don't need six and eight and ten year olds riding golf carts around before sunrise, after sunrise, without lights. And I have a suggestion. Perhaps make them go through an inspection or, or certification. <coughs> they put a sticker on a front left bumper saying that they were here, they have tail lights, they have headlights, they have directional signals so we know where they're going. And it is upsetting to ride on the state highway and have somebody going 10 miles an hour when you're trying to do 25 and a 30 on the, but around the side streets. I think 25 is fine on the main roads, first south, the river road, the highway. Keaton Beach Road, unless they go into the dump and they have that triangular sticker on the back that says, I'm, you know, special vehicle, and they're going to go dump their garbage. I think that's okay. Thank you. Hello, my name is Kirk Jones, and uh, I'm in favor of golf cart throughout Steen Hatchie. What is it, maybe a mile and a half from one side of Steen Hatchie to the other? So 25 miles per hour is reasonable within the confines of that. I'm a little more concerned <coughs> with a very heavily traveled road being in such poor condition as First Avenue. You know, I've been here for six years and it hasn't changed. All they do is throw tar at it. So whenever they fix that, they can also accommodate golf carts at the same time with no problem. People who have slow golf carts should be respectful and pull off the side of the road when somebody's coming up at 20, 25 miles an hour. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Yes, sir. My name is Carlos Marcos. My wife and I are uh, residents of Steen Hatchy. I wasn't going to say anything until the other gentleman spoke. Uh, I'm totally in favor of lowering the speed limit, keeping the town safe, for the children, for the elderly, and for all of us who live in Steve Hatchie. And that going forward with this proposal, along with what somebody else had said, which is to, to check on it and make sure we have the uh, proper uh, uh, police officers to check it out. But I also don't believe we need to be monitored. We don't need cameras looking up our butts every second. Now, so. As far as monitoring, if we want to be monitored, we go live in a big city. We came to Steen Hatchie for the laid back atmosphere, and that's what most people go to Steen Hatchie for. We're retired. Um, we use our golf cart also to go to Manny's, go to the bank, and, and do our all our errands and chores there in Steen Hatchie. So I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ed Jones. I live in St. Hatchie, 1214 Urban Avenue, Southeast. 
I have talked to the sheriff of the county and I've asked him to put a speed trap on that street. If we lower the speed limit, maybe they'll have a chance at getting some of these people that run 50 and 60 miles an hour after they turn it. Uh, Crabby dads there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And they turn there, they'll hit them 40 by the time they get halfway down the block. And then they're at 60 by the time they pass my house. So the sheriff blocked some of these people and asked him to put a stop sign there and try to help. That didn't help because they didn't approve it. But I certainly like to see the speed limits maintained at 25 wherever we travel on the Hatchie so we can use our golf carts safely. Mm -hmm. I want to travel safely in Steen Hatchie. Not be of the opinion that a lot of people who are now traveling to St. Hatchie that are feet in Jacksonville, Tampa, Orlando, wherever, can come in that tend to drive very fast. So if you write a few tickets, enforcement's been a problem. The Sheriff's Department is spread thin. I understand that. But if we have the Sheriff's Department backing us up on this and put a few speed traps in, it may help alleviate the problem. But right now, enforcement is a problem. I am watching on the street yesterday a child of nine to ten years old by himself with a cart full of children that age riding down the street in St. Hatchie. If we don't have enforcement for the ten year olds, are we going to let them ride in Perry? There are ten year olds. Do y'all see any ten year olds around Perry? There's a bunch of them in St. Hatchie that are 15, 10, 12. I don't know what their driving age is or whether they have a driving license, but I have to have insurance on my golf cart in St. Hatchie in order to run it legally. Plus, I don't want liability if I get hit or I hit somebody or create an accident. So there's a lot of enforcement rules involved in this that need to be done alongside the 25 mile an hour speed limit, which is fine for me. My family? Yes, sir. Anyone else? Anyone on the line? I've spoken at every meeting. Y'all need me to speak again? No. <laughs> Just like you usually do. Just in case any of y'all didn't know, I'm Shannon, owner of Puddin's Hatch Wagons, golf cart rental business in St. Hatchie. And again, I will repeat myself in a way of life. Uh, we started this business because of the convenience of, of getting around St. Hatchie to all of your local businesses, um, whether you're coming there for pleasure and or business. Um, again, I take my kids to school in a golf cart. The first avenue especially is <clears throat> how's my business location. Um, and every business owner in St. Hatchie, theoretically, along first avenue will be affected if we do not lower the speed to 25 miles an hour. That's uh, Maddie's, which is the only grocery store in town. The bank, my business location, the schoolhouse itself, along with kids walking up down our sidewalks after school gets out, the new Dollar General, the Water Authority, Ace Hardware, and the list goes on. As well as, I wanted to announce that y'all need to take into consideration not only during uh, off season times, but especially during in season. All of our marinas um, along the way, Sea Height, the new marina, uh, places of all in St. Hatchie aren't equipped necessarily for all mobile vehicle parking. So golf carts come in, you know, in handy with that aspect because we do run out of parking. So again, on my behalf, I'm for it and I think the whole town is for it. Thank y'all. Do that something out. But you don't rent to renters under 21. They got to be 21 or over. Absolutely. He does not rent to kids. <clears throat> Correct. It is an insurance requirement, 21 or over. We have a caller. Um, caller number 3989. Caller 3989, please uh, state your name and address. Uh, Kathy Bradwell, 6th Avenue, uh, St. Hattie. And uh, I had written a letter to Michael, but uh, I realized late that y'all were discussing this. So I just wanted to throw in my support. My husband and I are full time. We actually have friends that moved here, and it's because of the charm of the uh, city that they moved here. And one of the reasons for the golf cart community, they had property in Thomas Jackson. And he shared with me he's out of the country, but he wanted me to call in. 
We use our golf cart respectfully. We follow the law. We actually got rid of one of the vehicles because that's a primary uh, mode of transportation for me now. We go to Maddie, we go to the pharmacy, we go to Ace, we go to Poogie, we go all the way down that road. So it would be um, difficult for us. I'll also tell you it's a safety concern. Everyone knows that we go from 1,000 people to 10,000 people, and we've got to lower the speed limit because I walk every day, and they're not being abided by. That's a different problem. But I think that we need to continue to have this world where we can have golf carts and vehicles, but the speed limit through the small town needs to be 25 miles per hour. Thank you, All right, anyone? No, I'm good. Y'all said that. Any comments from the commission? Yeah, I'd like to say one thing. I sure appreciate y'all coming and speaking up for what you've done for us. Appreciate it. Every time we have an issue up here, sometimes we have a crowd, sometimes we don't. People don't come say a word and then they complain about it later. You know, so I appreciate y'all coming. Mr. Chairman, I just say certainly it's great to see everybody come out and uh, voice their concern and position. And uh, I did hear from Ms. Uh, Rizzo and a number of other folks by email that are in support of this. And, and I did hear from a, from a number of folks, a few folks that, that had concerns about that. One of the things that I think helped them in their concerns was the consideration that the board has taken up to. Um, also placed throughout St. Hatchie signage to remind our golf cart users to move over, which is part of the existing ordinance. So that there's reminders as to the speed limit and there's reminders as to uh, language of the ordinance. And, and so it, it can alleviate or eliminate this thread of backing up traffic or obstructing traffic, which by the way, is a offense that can be ticketed uh, should law enforcement see the need for that. So in respect to um, children on carts, I have seen that occurrence, but I've also seen the occurrence having <clears throat> accompanied law enforcement where uh, children were stopped and children were required to have their parents come pick them up and their car be driven by a licensed driver uh, back to a safe location. So I've seen and experienced a number of these issues. I will say in respect to law enforcement, I appreciate their efforts uh, to deal with a number of these concerns. And that's not hearsay. I, I happen to see and experience that firsthand. And uh, the, the kid, kids were very respectful. Parents were very appreciative. And I think the law enforcement demonstrated patience and due diligence in trying to work through this issue. And I certainly can respect and appreciate that. Um, in the capacity to the respect of this resolution and, and looking at the consideration and, and the overwhelming support of that, I'm in support at this point of moving forward. I would be more than willing to make a motion to adopt this resolution. I believe that's certainly in order, isn't it, Mr. Bishop? Yeah. I'll second that motion. I would like to speak first. For discussion? Sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I've heard from several people here this evening that um, did talk about the speed limit. Can you speak, speak up a little loud, please? I said we've heard from several people here this evening that did speak about the <clears throat> speed limit and the desire to change it to 25 miles an hour in the hopes that that would help things. We can't control it at the speed limit it is now. There's not enough officers. We don't have enough of officers to sit there around the clock. Um, so I don't know how reducing the speed limit is going to change that. And when you've got children, as this one gentleman spoke of, nine and ten years old on the golf cart, they're going to still do that. They're going to still do that. And I know I've been coming into Steen Hatching. Will you let me finish, sir? Yes, ma'am. 
I, I've been in the scene had you several, several times in the last, it was just the last couple of weeks, just to see for myself. And there are already golf carts that are driving to the roll-off. We came around that way and one pulled out right in front of us. And had we not been paying attention, we would have hit that golf cart. So I don't know that 25 miles an hour is going to solve the problem. Now, I don't have a problem with a golf cart community. I think there's a place for golf carts. And I think inside of Steen Hatch on all of these streets that are mentioned other than the Beach Road Northwest from 2nd Street to the roll-off, I think that, that would be fine. But I just don't think that the people are going to slow down just because they see a different speed limit sign. It's not enforced now. I just worry about the safety. I already know of children that have been hit on a golf cart and lost their lives right here, right here in Perry. And I feel like it's a matter of time before if we allow this to go forward, that it's just a matter of time before we have a tragedy. I would love if we could enforce the speed limit at 25 or even lower in some areas. I know the reality is that's not going to happen. So, you know, I feel like that part of our responsibility is to look after the safety and the welfare of the citizens of Taylor County. I can't support this. I, I, I don't want to have the blood of somebody else on my hands because sure as the world is people that are drinking, and we all know they drink and drive, it's going to happen. <clears throat> that is my fear. I got, a, I got a question for you. Hold on. Would you? Okay. Yeah. When I look at this and I'll see speed limit, what's the speed limit around the school? Okay, around school and city limits is less than that. Yeah. 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 One thing about it, all of us have to <clears throat> learn how to abide. Thank you. And we have to educate our people about abiding by the law. That's right. That's right. Some people, you know, have always done what they wanted to do and how they want to do it. Some have had to abide because that was a great consequence. So whatever we do, we're going to have to abide by the law. That's right. Would you rather have the blood on your hands at 25 or 55? You have an opportunity right here to change it where the blood is on your hand at 25 versus 55. That's my opinion. You also said you, if you weren't paying attention, isn't everybody behind the wheel supposed to pay attention? Amen. In response to one comment you made, ma'am, about you would not have the law enforcement to enforce the speed limit at 25, I think we as adult citizens of Dean Hatchet are also responsible enough to maintain what the law puts out. That's right. You're always going to have someone that's not going to abide, but we know who they are in our community, and we're the first ones to pick the phone up and call the sheriff's office and report them. Well, so fair. whether it's 25 or 35, 25 is a better number. Yeah. Yeah. Generate some revenue by writing out some tickets. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I just say, as Commissioner Vimp said, you know that that is part of the effort and understanding moving forward. We're able to go at a 25 speed limit, and as an effort to communicate with the the users of the roadway and accompany those speed limit signs with language from this ordinance as it is written to expressly remind mm -hmm. golf cart users to move over and allow the other vehicle traffic to move by. And that's part of what's in existence. Yeah. It's just another way to calm the efforts with traffic, to keep that from being a congestion, and to eliminate this continued frustration. Of a number of the folks that I've spoken with, 
they, they have, the biggest issue that they have is that they wind up behind a cart and the cart won't move over. So I feel like if we have this measure put in place to remind that, does that mean every cart's going to move over? Let's, let's just be real. Uh, we know that there, every driver doesn't abide by the speed limit as much as every cart user may not take that reminder and move over and let folks go. And there's ways and we have law enforcement to help deal with those issues. But, but to just throw up our hands and not try to meet these needs in this community, I, I'm just not in favor of that. Okay. My motion stands to adopt the resolution. Yeah. We've heard from our county engineer the last time we discussed it, and he is a professional engineer, and we also heard from our county administrator who related the traffic numbers to us. Those are real numbers. Those are real numbers in terms of how fast people are going. Speed limits not as posted. There's people from all over. Some gentleman said from all these different states, it's not just local people that drive on the roads, it's people from all these states also. And according to the numbers that we have, the speed limit in many cases is not being followed. And yes, it's the responsibility of all of us to do it. We all know it doesn't happen, not just in Seenhatchee. I have roads in my district where I have complaints of speeders. I've had the sheriff out, I've had the highway patrol, I've done everything I could do. You cannot control it. Um, so I don't know, LaWanda, if you want to uh, remind everybody of those numbers that we collected and our, our county engineer, do you have anything else to say about this before? I don't think there's a need for a reminder. We have, we've got reminded of 18 letters plus new letters. I'm familiar with what the engineer said. And I'm familiar with the information. And the numbers that I see are the number of needs that are before this board. Mm -hmm. So what I would say is I feel like I can make the difference and make the opinion and make the judgment call. And my motion stands to adopt this resolution. Yes. 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 There, there may be people here tonight that wasn't here the other night that did that here. He's assuming that. Everybody here has heard it. Maybe they have. I don't know. The numbers are what they are. Everybody's for it. What's the problem? Yeah. Uh -oh. you, you don't, if I could say something. No. I would uh, just like to speak real quick. That we have the same scenario that we're asking the 25. I deal with it. I mean, I see it in, in, in places in my district down the Spina River. I deal with it from. 55 down to 25. I get called all the time. And uh, I mean, to say that, I mean, our sheriff does a good, pretty good job. I mean, when, when, anytime I call the sheriff, I mean, he or call staff and they have the sheriff go down and, and deal, and they have sat there and wrote tickets. I mean, I got calls of, of, of the sheriff out here writing tickets and slowing people down in that community. And I mean, but in the same sense, we've got the same thing going on with Keep Beach. You know, we've got Keep Beach. It's, I think that. Speed limit going up to the uh, Hodges Park is what's that? Twenty five. Nobody pays attention to that. They don't. They don't pay attention to the communities already. So I, I mean, I, I can't help but we've got a community that is. It's maybe a mile and a half, like someone said, maybe a mile and a half, two miles wide. So and we've got businesses that this cut this would support this business these businesses in a big way you know, especially the, i guess the golf cart rental guys uh, not just mine but all not, of them. not just your business but i mean there's several businesses Air here Marino, Marino, Fort C. Uh, here uh, they're supporting uh, others meetings everywhere in florida by the way <laughs> and so okay we're, we're gonna speak one at a time okay, anyway. so uh we uh so in respect to you know, yeah, we we did yeah, maybe we we didn't run the ordinance in the paper, but I don't think that you know, this is the first time that this has been heard throughout that community. I think this talk throughout that community has been a lot bigger than just the paper or or because I know I've had a number of calls on it. And I've had I haven't had anyone you know, reject or go against it. So uh, you know, as far as the resolution, I mean I'm. You know, move forward with, with the motion in the second. If I could just clarify for maybe for everyone's benefit, this effort initially came to the board in October 
and was an effort from Public Works, from our county engineer, um, in an effort to, to um, help set the boundaries for a golf cart community. And once we started that effort, we realized that there were some um, roads in the ordinance that were over 25 miles an hour. So this has been going on for a number of months. The safety concern that staff has brought up is only for the section on Beach Road to the roll-off site. Staff does not have a concern about the other roads or we would not have brought this to the board in the first place. So I just want to clarify that the safety concern is only for that particular section and that, um, and of course with Commissioner Newman's support, this was something that was originally brought to the board in an, in an effort to, to address safety concerns in that area. Just so everyone understands that the, their concern is about that one section. The dock is a part of our lives. We have to go there. Sir? I have a question. I have a question. Miss um, Beagle and Miss Pemberton, do either one of you live in Steenhatchie? Sir, if you would just address the board, not individually. Oh, I'm sorry. Do, do they live in Steenhatchie? No, no, just the board. Okay. Where? Okay. Okay. Um, I'd just like to say one other thing on behalf of what we have discussed already and what you just got through speaking. Uh, if you want to add a little more to this, it's just as important out to the roll-off for our community when you consider all of the activities, the fishing tournaments, the uh, fiddler crab fest, we have the uh, scallop season. That affects those people that's out there coming and going on that road too. And believe you, the community and the people here consider that as well. So that area is just as important as any other street in our town and we want it all together. So let's keep it together and I agree with you, sir. Yeah, one more right here front. That's not yeah and so I understand the concerns and, and they're they're well founded concerns. We can't control everybody's speeding and what they're gonna do is to drop in the speed limit may or may not curb the amount of speed that's coming down that road. However Golf carts do it today. So if we can't try to make it better for the people that are doing it today, they're still going to continue to do it tomorrow, whether you change the speed or not. Unless you set a, a traffic cop out there to stop the golf carts. I mean, that's the only way you're going to do it. If we can't stop the cars, you're not going to stop the golf carts. So anything we can do to make it better, going to the dump, the down past Maddie's, whatever it is. I work on the golf carts. I run the only shop in town. And most, I mean, most people come to me and say, I want my cart to go faster. And I will not make them faster than 20 mile an hour because right now the county ordinance, the, the, when I looked them up, when I started my business, said a golf cart will not exceed 20 mile an hour. I can make a lot of them go faster than 20 mile an hour if that's what we need to make it better. But that makes a golf cart inherently dangerous to go that fast. But people want to do it because they don't want to slow down traffic. They don't want to have to pull over. They don't want to get out of the way. But that's what they do because I won't make them that fast. But they can go 20. If you make it 25, 20 mile an hour and 25 mile an hour is not that far different. 35 mile an hour when they're going 45 because you can run faster than the speed limit and get away with it. 45 mile an hour and 25 is a big difference. So anything we can do to make it better, that makes it safer. Whether they adhere to it or not, that's something else we have to drive to. As a community, we need to drive to that. And, and for us, if that's, you know, even... Heck, even if we had to go and, and pay for more sheriffs in town, there's already, what, three or four that live there? How many live there now? Uh, three that's living there. So they live in Steenhatchie with us. So uh, they're willing to work with us. So it's one way or the other. We either can make this work or we can't make it work. But you're not, I say you're not going to stop it. Yeah, we did with the bridge. You all stuck a damn stop up. Now nobody can go over the bridge with a cop golf cart now. But that's another story. But it's... It, it is going to happen. It, it, it just is. So let's do what we can to make it as safe as possible, especially for the ones that aren't there and seeing at you all the time, because people come visit all the time. That's what everybody's saying. We have an expansion of people during our seasons, during our festivals, and it just inherently makes the golf cart that much more. So what we can do to make it better, just it helps. It will help. 
Yeah, one more that has not spoken, and we'll listen to one more, and then we're going to move on. Maybe I can make a suggestion that instead of you know getting rid of golf carts, if that was the intent of this idea, or um, even reducing the speed limit, which I agree probably is not going to solve the problem because people don't people inherently want to speed. Why don't we consider building a walking path or a bicycle path like they have in Keaton Beach? <laughs> that from the end of Steve Hatchy out to the roll-off site that would give a safer place for people to either ride their bicycles to the dump or for exercise out there, ride golf carts to the dump, so they're not on the road creating a potential hazard for people traveling on that road, but we can still have access to the dump, which people need to have access to. All right. <laughs> Um, uh, thank you for that comment, and I, I just remind the public, you know, this board has had a number of discussions about walking trails, walking paths in that specific area from actually uh, the end of the trail at Dark Island all the way to Sting Hatchin. So that consideration still exists, but it's for walking purposes, or biking or hiking, and it's for non-motorized use, typically. So I'm, I'm not opposed to that concept, I'll just say in the interim, there's still the need today to address the needs that exist in this community. So, um, I can certainly appreciate everybody's point of view, their position, but I also say in respect to safety, there there are other measures in respect to this area on Beach Road that can be taken up, that can be implemented, that can demonstrate safety that can remind the users of the roadway of what the speed limit is. This board has spoken about a number of those. In my research, my understanding is that these are called calming measures that are used across the world to help folks on roadways continue to be reminded to the limits and the requirements on the strip or stretch of road that they're trying to navigate. So, I don't have any problem at all working with staff to understand and move closer to this realization. And I'm certainly in support of public safety and the implementation of rumble strips and the signs that we're spoken about to remind the cars to move over and be cognizant of what your surroundings are and let vehicles by and part of the ordinance in existence. So if that means that there's a number or sequence of rumble strips with the speed limit signs, with the signs to remind carts to move over and we implement that so that we continue to maintain the direction toward public safety and handle liabilities and continue to remind drivers and users of the roads of what the limitations are then i think all of those things demonstrate safety and they demonstrate keeping at priority one the interest of pedestrians or, or motorists or golf cart drivers or whomever all the way to the extent, and we've spoken about this on this board, if it in the future requires a flashing sign that reminds folks of how fast they're going, then we can implement that process. We can implement that strategy. And I'm certainly in support of that. But to just throw up our hands and say, it's too much, too much of a risk, it's not in the interest of public safety, I think that's just taking this propping up on a on a, on rhetoric. And it's not addressing the issue and the need that's at hand. And for the last time, my motion stands, and I call the vote. Call for the question. Question. I'm ready to vote. All right. We have a motion. And a second. second. I'm saying. We'll go ahead and uh, take it to a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Resolution All right. All right. Good work. Good job. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. Mr. Chairperson, just, just as a housekeeping item, the Beach Road section will not be quote unquote legal until the ordinance is adopted. That is, I think, the only section of road that is not currently addressed in the ordinance, but we'll go through that. And it will, of course, take us a little bit of time to get new speed limits. Right. 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 Right.
the next public hearing item. The board to hold a public hearing set for this date at 6 10 p.m. or as soon thereafter as possible to discuss and receive public input for the local transportation disadvantage program. Hey, everybody. Hey, Beverly, how are you? Yes. I'm good. I'm good. As you know, this is our annual public hearing and it's required of the planning grant. I will briefly give you some statistics and then we can let the public speak up. Last year we provided 12,352 trips on the in-town shuttle. That's up 1,632 from the previous year. The trips that were provided, 3,372 were for medical purposes. 2,141 were to get to the appointment. 2,631 were to get to either, um, educational programs or daycare. And 5,208 were for general shopping or um, to pay bills or just to visit general locations in the community. The shuttle travel. 218,818 miles, and there were no accidents. And I want to um, reiterate on that standpoint, over the last three years, there have been no um, accidents. Through the transportation planning grant, um, a large portion of the grant savings salary is funded through that program. Last year, we received $20,433. This year we'll be receiving $21,523. And that pretty well covers the program that the employees of SNAP and Special Olympics um, tokens that we passed out. And that's a fair to do the program. I know Jamie recently purchased 450 more tokens with the SNAP program that the board's done. And then we will be coming back soon this year and that's coming again for that program. Any questions? I don't have a question, but I do have a comment. I sit on this board, and I think that this, this program provides a valuable service to our community. Um, a lot of people would not be able to get to the doctor, or get to the senior uh, center, or to get to, the, to go shopping without this program. So I think it's it's, it's very and we need to continue to support this this program. Uh, and I really appreciate all the people that work toward making this program um, successful. Thank you. To the public hearing, we'd like to open it up to the public. Anyone on the public want to please you? Local transportation disadvantage program. You want on the left? Any more comments from our commissioners? I, I echo Miss <clears throat> Fan and what she said about they have to they provide a pretty good service. Yeah. And they are on time. Yeah. Some people will not, would not be able to go and do and they didn't have this thing. Do we want to speak to uh, close the public hearing? Do we need a motion to approve? Do we need to read by town on it? Is this just to accept the... the this, this is just, yes, yeah, this is okay. to receive public input if we have complaints, but there is nothing to go on tonight. This is just a requirement of the grant that we have a, a, a public meeting where the board or a citizen is concerned. Well, thank you. 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 For 2006, it was me and you. That's right. <laughs> My name is Bill Rowell, 4510 Shady Grove. 
not clean hatching, even though we're talking about clean hatching. <clears throat> Prior to 2006, there was an exemption in the subdivision rule that allowed 15 acre tracks. Was not was the exempt from the subdivision rule. <clears throat> During that time, we worked on some large projects: the uh, last track, Rosehead Preserve, Inconvenient Preserve on 14, and the county enacted this new rule. <clears throat> and what the rule does, it limits the number of units that you can have on an easement. The 15, the easement, has, so it's not more than eight parcels. And the 40 acres, not so it's more than 24 acres, 24 parcels. Nowhere in this rule does it limit the number of parcels that you can break up a piece into. It deals strictly with the easement. And if you own that property before October 17, 2006, you're exempt from that rule. You go back to no rule. This came up. I have never interpreted <coughs> this rule that way. I've been on the board since, I don't know how many years I've served on the thing that's on the board. Hard to stretch the word county commission when I come on out. And I had to get off. Because I'm about to go before the planning and zoning board of this. And I need uh, Mr. Jeff Steele, who lives or have a property in Quail Run, filed a complaint against the Cooleys because we had broken their property up in 15 acre tracks. And no easement had more than just two or three parcels attached to it. Okay. I got my information from a, I'm going to call it a, a general conversation after a planning and zoning board meeting. And it was told us that Mr. Steele, the code enforcement officer, Ms. Lawanda, the county engineer and Danny had met. And they said that we could not get building permits on these tracks because we exceeded the eight units It's eight units per easement, not per parcel. Another thing that we have in 2006, the uh, Department of Revenue has changed the definition of a parcel. Now it's a parcel inside a section, but every little piece has a unique parcel number. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the division of property. <clears throat> I do not believe that the code enforcement officer talked to the coolies. I've asked them, and I mean, they are elderly people. They have combined lots, reduced the price. I mean, I'm talking about tens of thousands of dollars that they reduced their price because of the code enforcement officer interpreting the rule this way. He did not go to them and address them. I always used to, and used to, don't give it no more. But all complaints came to the planning and zoning board and then to the code enforcement officer. And I think that's the way it should be instead of the code enforcement officer is going out there really busy making these rules and causing people, costing people money. There's no checks and balances with them. And I don't know. I've asked numerous times for his report. I haven't got it. The report is not complete as of yet. Well, it should be if he's going to tell the coolies that he cannot. I don't believe he's had a conversation with the coolies. Isn't that what you just said? He did not have a problem. But we were told. I mean, this was a general conversation, it wasn't in a meeting, okay. that they could not get building permits on the lots that we created. And that's what I said, it means that he did not go to the coolies. He should have 
addressed them before he made his determination that they couldn't do it. And he, I mean, it's an old fashioned, I believe words mean something. It's in our rules. Okay. And it says it is exempt in the subject rules. I don't know. And if, if Mr. Steele doesn't have 15 acre parcels down there, the coolies, where somebody got a lot of money, can put in 1,400 bucks on this property. It's, if somebody wants to spend some money, and make some money, they could put 1,400 lots on this property. I mean, it's permitted to that. Of course, you don't have to pay road, you got to deal with Kim and Dudley and doing it. But anyway, I would like for the board, and especially Mr. Bishop, to affirm to me that I have the right interpretation of this rule. That's what I'm asking for. Does that make sense? Bishop, are you familiar with just looked at this today? I, I understand. Uh, did you get to get, I mean, Mr. Bishop, you and I were here in 2006 when we passed that, so you ought to remember it. <laughs> oh, sure, I do. <laughs> Every day I remember it. Yeah. <laughs> I've got it right here. Third day I've got it right here. I'm oh, okay. It. The thing to do is let's just listen to the to the rule, okay? Y'all will listen as I read. Sit down. It says this is under section 42-147 of the code. And it's Speak up, please. I'm speaking about as loud as I can. <laughs> You know, I'm one of them elderly folks that keep talking about senior citizens. It starts off with the term generally, generally. For purposes of this subdivision, all development plans shall be designated by the planning director as either minor or major developments as set forth in this section, <laughs> except notwithstanding this subsection and subsection B of this section, any division of land into three or more parcels of 15 acres or greater, each of which has at least 60 feet of frontage on an existing county maintained road. So that's one part, right, Dale? Right. Okay. All right. Then it has a comma. It says each of which has at least 60 feet of well, there's a comma, and then it says, any division of land deeded to the present landowner on or before October 17, 2006, into three or more parcels of 15 acres or greater, comma, each of which has at least 60 feet of frontage of an existing private easement or private roadway servicing not more than eight parcels, comma, and any division of land into three or more parcels of 40 acres or greater, each of which has at least 60 feet of frontage on an existing private easement or public roadway, servicing not more than 24 parcels, is exempt from this subdivision. Okay, the most important issue of this is the October date of 2006. Y'all follow that? It's because it says it's October 17th of 2006. Okay. So your question is, is the Cooleys who own the property on or before October 17th of 2006, can they divide <laughs> the parcels into 15 acres or more with 60 foot 60 foot frontage on Sugar Hill Road Northeast and two private roads that were originally logging roads. Well, they owned the property before 2006, October 6th. And can they divide 15 
acres more or less, well, they're exempt, are they not, of the uh, amount which this did into three <coughs> lots. So they can do more than three, right? Yes. Okay. All right. Because they're exempt if they follow underneath the um, 42 past, past 147. Okay. Now, and also, um, if they in fact also have at least 60 foot of frontage, right? They do. Okay. All right. So everything in this is, if you follow it and if they fit in within the uh, various commas, for lack of a better term, then they're exempt. Could I ask you to read the part about the 60 foot road frontage again, please? Yes, sir. I barely heard you. I'm teasing it. I'm teasing it. All right. You know how old, old folks are. I would say speak for yourself, but I can't. <laughs> okay. Of this section, any division of land into three or more parcels of 15 acres, more or less, each of which has at least 60 feet of frontage on an existing county road, any division of land deeded to the present landowner on or before October 2006, and the three or more parcels of 15 acres each or greater, each of which has at least 60 feet of frontage on an existing private easement or public road. That's on the first part, okay? So the first part seems to say on county maintained road, and then the second part says on an existing private easement or private roadway. Is that what you want? Is that what you want, Red Sir? Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Have a question. Is a logging road considered a private or public easement? Well, it all depends because a private easement inures to an owner who keeps it private, but on a public easement that for years folks have used as what we call prescriptive, say, to get to their property for a certain amount of years, it can become public. Okay. Well, I didn't even know this was going to be on here because I saw it tonight. I live at uh, King Hatch Acres. So I guess my, are we talking about the area and the um, easements between Quail Run and Steen Hatch Acres? Is that a city, county, or a logging road? Because it needs something done to it. It's a private easement. It's a private easement. <clears throat> Those logging roads, we improved them. They are now easements. An uh, easement is a legal term. It is. And it is not a deed. And let me explain to you how we handle this. The coolies does not want to end up owning nothing in this area. So what we did on that six is a 60 foot easement. And what we did is we gave each lot 15 foot of that lot. Now, but the easement is 60 feet. From the road across the front. Pardon? From the road across the front, which is? Uh, well, across the front of it is a couple hundred feet. Some of them five or six hundred feet. They all got multiple hundred foot road frontage, if you would. The easement comes off of Sugar Hill Lane and goes through their property. It was a logging road and you know, going through Swanee River Water Management District and I assumed that uh, Mr. I was calling him Danny, I'm sorry. Mr. Griner, probably he, he, he agreed that they were usable roads. So they went in and they improved that easement. 
to sell it because you can't sell a road out in the middle of a swamp. And it's two of those easements, and one of them, I mean, what, what we did to allow the coolies not to end up owning nothing in there, we made, we broke that easement up into fingers, if you would. But the easement is 60 foot wide. Each lot in there, each parcel, has a 60 foot easement. And has multiple, I'm, I don't know, I'm, I'm not looking at it, but I do know four or five hundred foot road frontage on each lot. Uh, is this something that we're able to work out tonight, or is something that we need to go and... I don't know, I, I think there was some confusion over the logging roads, and can I ask Mr. Dale a question? Mm -hmm. When you met with, with Mr. Greiner, mm -hmm. because I know that y'all met after the Tech Review Committee, when you met with Mr. Danny mm -hmm. Reiner after the Tech Review Committee met, mm -hmm. did you bring up to him about the logging roads? Because well, I, we, we, we brought this up before before we broke it up, before we did anything. Mm -hmm. We told him what we was doing. Okay. And you have to watch your words. You cannot build a road. You just gonna get, you, you, get in trouble with one of your water management district. Right. But you can improve a road. And these were the existing log roads. Okay. You can see them on the map, on the aerial photograph, you can see them. I mean, we straightened some out, we put colors in, mm -hmm. but we made them drivable. And we made a 60 foot easement from Sugar Hill Lane through all the parcels. And on that first one, there is, and another thing, a couple of these blocks, they have other access, but because of the rain and the water, the one coming through Clean Hatch Acres, the road goes on the water, so we gave them access to the easement. Mm -hmm. And then another one had access to the end of the bird, bird farm road. Mm -hmm. And they, all of those, and, you know, we took all that into consideration. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you cannot build a road in Taylor County with our current county engineer. So when you met with Mr. Greiner, I did not meet with Mr. Greiner. You didn't speak. Okay. Well, I think Ms. Pam. Ms. Pam did. Okay. But, I apologize. But was this brought up to him then? This was back when we, before we did the first thing. Okay. I don't know if you know what Diane, uh, the Cooley's daughter, Diane. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> she hoped, and she wanted to make sure everything was done just right, and we had to go and get everything <coughs> before we did. The first bit of work on it. Now I've been working for the coolies since uh, they own that property. I know in 2000 because that's when I did spend the education. And so they had it before that, probably in the same. So it's grandfathered in. I think the big issue with me is you're not limited to the number of tracks that you can have. You can limit it to the number of tracks you can have on that easement. And that is my point of contention. And another thing I have a problem with, somebody should have went and spoke with the coolies and not be brought up in a general discussion, hey, you can't get a building permit on that. And and I'm I'm not sure of the, the chain of events, so yeah, um, I understand. Well, I understand. And I don't want to point my finger at nobody, but the fact is, is that the coolies combine them lots to make them more, make the price go down, so that somebody would buy. Them. And I think that is the big issue I have is that they lost money, and all because of the code enforcement officer. Some questions first. Go ahead. You go ahead. I'll come forward. Speak. My name is Jeff Steele. Oh, hey. nice to meet you, sir. I'm nice happy to. Meet you. I've been happy to speak to you before. I know we never spoke before. No, sir. Um, so I'm a resident of Taylor County, Steenhatchee, for about 15 years. I live in Quail Run. Quail Run, when I purchased in there, was supposed to be a deed restricted community that was set up by the Cooleys with you. County never reviewed the documents. The documents are not legal. The documents that formed this association were formed after the association 
was, or the community was built and lots were sold. Therefore, attorney said, you cannot enforce any restrictions on any lots within that community. Because I wish we had an association, we did. And we own our roads that go between your community and our community. The Cooey's retained a private roadway between the two roads. And for years, our road was closed. The Cooey's kept it closed at the end, and we were in a small community that was in and of itself, and we did not have a massive amount of traffic running through it. As the Cooey's aides, they decided they're going to uh, do away with this restriction. They opened up the gate. We couldn't put a gate back. You put up barriers. People come and drag them out of the way. We own our road. We have to pay for our road. It was all a single track of property, and the Cooey's did not put in place any access for the property on the south side of that road. The maybe on the north side of the road owns the property, owns, owns the road. That property has been broken up into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pieces of property or 10 pieces of property. Mm -hmm. Several of them have zero access to the property. They have no easement. They have no legal means of accessing the property. The major portion that I questioned was not how many pieces of property, but the fact that they created new easements and the, and the code says existing easements. The main road is an existing easement. When you then create a 60 foot wide section and you break it up, does the property that purchases have to have a 60 foot wide easement on the main road? Or can it be broken up into three parcels as long as it's 60 foot wide? I can sell each of you 10 feet of it and I go flagpole out to the end. Because my understanding is you have to have 60 feet of existing frontage on an existing road, which is Sugar Hill Lane. What they've done is they've taken that 60 foot wide and they've broken it up into multiple lots to accommodate the land that they created behind the main 15 acre pieces of front. We've also broken it up into less than 15 acre parcels. There's at least three parcels that were broken up in that into less than 15 acres. There's a 10 acre parcel and a five acre parcel and another smaller parcel. So it's not just one piece of that that seems to be ignored, it's multiple pieces. I have to live with what's created. I want good neighbors. I wish the Cooey's would have spent the money or sold the property to somebody that would have come in and brought the roads up to county standard and broken it up and sold it and brought more revenue to the county. Because these 15 acre lots aren't going to bring in near as much money as if it had been done properly and we extended the public road and we put roads in there and we broke it up into one or two acre parcels and we would have had water and sewer and facilities and we would have had tax paying residents to help support the county and the and the community. But we're breaking it up because we don't want to put the money into bringing the roads and things up to standard to development. They don't want to own it, I understand that. But it needs to be done to county standards so that the community benefits from what's done. Not just the not just the Cooey's exit strategy out of the land. Thank you. I agree with Mr. Steele. He does have, I'm sorry, I have a bad back. Uh, I agree with Mr. Steele a lot of what he says. But one thing, he says that there's no access to those lots. There's a 60 foot easement to every lot in there. <laughs> there's a 60 foot easement to every lot that we created. The lots that are less than 15 acres, there's one in there. But what happened there is, uh, I'm going to call him Joe Snuffy, because okay? I don't remember names. This guy owned a piece of property, and he wanted to extend his property over, so he bought three or four acres. That is not subdividing, that is joining property together, and it don't count. I mean, when you, when you, buy, when you buy a piece of property, a J50 yours, that is not subdividing. I don't know what you want to call it, I call it joining, you know. Okay, the other piece of property that is this has access through the end of the bird pond road. Now, in the bird pond road goes on the water in the rainy season. 
But we gave everybody an easement, a 60 foot easement, out to Sugar Hill Lane. And uh, the main thing about this, this is all, we're exempt from these rules because it was the coolies owned it before 2006. There's no piece of property in there that does not have a 60 foot easement. There's no piece of property in there that has, I'm going to say, probably most of them have got three or four or five hundred foot if you think of that road good, but besides all around, it's got a lot of road frontage. And if, <clears throat> I imagine if the coolies was young like it was in 2002, it would have broken us up into 1,400 blocks. Somebody can buy this piece of property they got left, subdivide it, and break it up into 1,400 tracks. Parcels. I mean, they're going to be small. <clears throat> they had to, that's what sales and steam has. You're talking about getting $25,000 or $30,000 a piece for those lots. There's a lot of money involved out there. And I understand that Mr. Steele does not want no neighbors. And we ain't asking to use their road. We at first asked them, could we use it? And they said no. They don't want nobody in there. And I don't. I think Mr. Steele lives somewhere else besides here. He may have done moved here since I first heard of it. But uh, I don't think this is his primary residence. But it don't matter anyway. But he said that he lived here, and he probably does. Uh, I think the main thing that I'm saying is that we're not limiting the number of tracks that they have. We're limiting the number of tracks they have on easement not a total parcel. And that was the complaint. Okay, any questions for me? Thank you. What are the questions? Conrad, do you want to meet with staff so we can so we can go through the entire scenario with you? Yeah, one of the things that that, that that bothers me about this is that we don't have an aerial, we don't have the subdivision plat, and we're listening to these folks tell about lots and lands and, and easements and so forth and so on, and we can't even look at them. Well, I understand, Mr. Bishop, and that is not the point here. The point is is that they limited the number of tracks that we could have, and I don't care if we do it in circles. <clears throat> Well, and as long as you meet that requirement and you own the property before 2006, you're exempt from these rules. And another thing, I was that when you have a meeting with the county staff, somebody should take minutes and notes, and when the public requests a copy of that, I think we should be able to get all ask three or four times for the notes on that. Not from the tech review committee meeting. Pardon? I don't believe you asked for the, the report from the tech review committee meeting. Uh, exactly. What I asked for was any any report from the uh, oh, no. enforcement officer. Right. And I wish that he went. I'm no longer on the planning and zoning board. This caused me to get off the planning and zoning board because I can't argue. Mm -hmm. I, I've had to sit there and shut my lips when I'm sitting there on the board. Because I can't comment on it. Did you have something you wanted to say? Just, um, <clears throat> excuse me, in response to what Conrad said, if she can navigate to the same subdirectory that your agenda presentations are on, there is actually an aerial there. That folder where you have your presentations. Pulled up on the uh, property appraiser's website. It's on every one of the lots is on the property appraiser's <coughs> website. Well. But is it even looking at the very decision? Uh -huh. to yeah, I, I don't think there's a decision for us to be made. But I'm I think if council can meet with staff and maybe get down to the nuts and bolts of what's going on. We'll take on this item until there's further discussion. Well, it might be an issue between uh, the landowners. <clears throat> so no, there is issues that in how this was, how it looks 
now versus how it was, that it would benefit even staff to have some finality on how this, how the term subdivision is actually applied for in addition to, <clears throat> excuse me, um, whatever it is, 42, 147 or something like that, how that one's applied 42, as well. 42, 147. Yes, sir. It, yeah, there is that as well as, you know, the, the simple aspect of a subdivision because um, Mr. Al alluded to it in that when you have properties that are purchased that are owned by an, <clears throat> an adjacent property owner, you're you are actually carving out a piece of that parent parcel. It has been deemed as not included as the context of subdividing that parent parcel. And this has happened numerous times, even below that 15 acre threshold. So there, there's more than one issue that's at work here. Of course, there's the Cui issue as well as we, we would like the benefit of resolving all of it as one so that we can have better growth management um, going forward. Because what you see is 2018, and that's the only, that's as far back as I was able to grant some, get some parcels. Oh, I don't know if I can see this. <clears throat> this is the parent parcel here that he's referring to, or all the discussion is about, as well as this over into here and these down in here. These were, subdivided back in 2011, but they all come out of that parent parcel. What you can see the way things look today is now you have all of this in here. And this is what kind of brought some of it to the, the forefront to where there were, we really see things at the point in time that you wind up to have someone come to your desk and say, I need a building permit. So a lot of this stuff gets recorded. We don't have checks and balances to where we need to do everything that gets recorded. If someone puts a deed to it and takes it to the courthouse, that's what happens. So when they walk over here, that's when growth management or planning department starts looking at stuff and say, okay, is it, does it conform with the code of, or, code of ordinances and is it appropriate to issue a building permit? That's when everything hit the fan. So that's when you're seeing um, all of these highlighted areas here are ones that have been divided from parent parcels. Many of those, at the time we first saw those, not since these easements have been created, but the original development of those had 20 acre or 20 foot width, 20 foot width, 20 foot width for a 60 foot total, but that's three different parcels. You had five acre parcels, you had 10 acre parcels, you had 10 acre parcels over here. So this is what brought the context of 42147 up when you have a description in there that says you must meet this, 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 and this in order to be exempt from this section of our code of ordinances. That's what we would love to you know, explore at least and kind of drill down and have a definitive answer to say, yes, this is the right way to do this. So that can be done in a, in a forum of you know, face to face, more less less formal than this proceeding, then you know we're fine with that. <clears throat> I agree with that. <clears throat> yeah, we appreciate that, and uh, we thank you, Doug. Good job, Mr. Dudley. We don't care what anyone says. Yeah, I, I, I hear all the time. Comment. We have asked numerous times in the past. See, if you do a subdivision, you got to do a paved road. You got all this stuff to go through, <clears throat> and I'm sorry, but Mr. Dudley is against development in Taylor County. And whenever you do that, you can't get a subdivision approved in Taylor County. You cannot get a subdivision approved in Taylor. But I would be agreeable to provide a county, and some counties call them Class C subdivisions, and, it, and we showed them what we did. And, and it shows it's like, now, it is a common practice to break an easement up into the, I can show you numerous places here in Taylor County where we've done that in the past. Mr. I think we're going to staff and Mr. Bishop are going to all collaborate together and uh, work out the details. And I'm sure they will be happy to include you in any. I'm, I'm, I'm out of it. The coolies has done combined and lost their money. 
And I don't know what they're going to do about that food. But they, I'm, as far as I know, I'm out of it. I'm no longer work for the coolies. I mean, not on this project. I would like for somebody to give me a definition of a log road. Thank you. Well, it's just, it's just can, can engineer give me a can engineer give me a description? I mean, the definition of a logging road. There is no definition for a logging road. So absent some. Um, if you look at that aerial, you'll see those roads was there before. I see a lot of skitter right. trails. I don't see any logging roads. It was a trail road. Right. Well, speak. So just to try to remove ambiguity, subjective reasoning on this, if you were to go through, and hopefully we can do this with Conrad, uh, excuse me, Mr. Bishop, when we sit down face to face, and look at those aspects because 421 to 47 makes reference to a private easement or private roadway. Well, if you go back all the way to section one and look at the definitions, there's not a definition of what it says explicitly a private road or a private easement. But what you can do is look at the code of ordinance structure and it says, it gives reference to all roads have to follow the hierarchy system, which is arterial freeway collector and local. And it even goes even further and says private roads, um, subdivisions, private roads within developments are allowable as long as they are you know, constructed in accordance with that hierarchy system. The lowest order that we have is a local road. If you go and look and you, and you follow the code of ordinances through those exemptions, it says private roads are allowed in there as long as they comply with figure I don't remember all the first part of it, but it's E3 on the last one. Well, that E3 figure is a lime rock graded road. So there are the context of what is a private road in, in what you should use to apply, apply under 42147. It's in there. It's not a two rut road. It's not a logging road means different things to different people. We have to use what is in the code of ordinances to make our determination and the lowest order that's in it is a graded road as it applies to a private road. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <clears throat> All right. Uh, yes, I do live at uh, in Hatchie Acres. So I know that Commissioner Newman came and talked to us a couple of years ago about the end of Sugar Hill Road. And at that time, they were wanting to keep it closed. We didn't have that traffic going back and forth between the two. Whoever a lot of golf carts would use that road to go to the roll off because you wouldn't have to come all the way through town. Now, I guess I want to make sure I understand about these easements and logging roads. Are we talking about that section of Lime Rock between Quail Run and Stanhatchy Acres? Is that what they're talking about, the easement? When you came and spoke with us in our community, our subdivision, at that time, that was all woods. That has exploded. Everything along that road is a property that belongs to somebody. So if I'm paying an extra tax, when I'm already paying county tax, and I pay a special assessment tax on that county road that goes to the end of the blacktop, now you have people living out there. I just, I'm just a little bit curious what happens now. Yeah, I think, Mr. Bishop, I think you know you and I have had a conversation with respect to Sugar Hill Lane and the assessment that is attached to those parcels. So, you know, my my request in regards to this consideration would be that we we do go to the first extent to quantify these parcels that, that are being assessed for maintenance and, and for the resurfacing of this, these, this road, this one road. And then are there contingencies in respect to this uh, potential easement that would share those same fixed costs to those parcel owners so that <clears throat> You know, these folks aren't left with a, a road that's in need of repair or in disrepair, but they don't have the contributors that are taking their fair share in respect to the maintenance on that. And, and can I just add, and that is completely different from Steenhatchy Acres to Quail Run. Because Quail Run was set up as a private community with no public support and no met maintenance method for the roads yet you've now created a highway from B, from 51 to Beach Road because everybody wants to cut through our community and their community to go mm -hmm. to the roll off in your golf carts or in your trucks and they do 60 mile an hour plus down our road. 
all the time. And I'm going to add to that, the sheriff will not patrol a private room. Cannot. Right, we'll let staff and uh, council get together and they can get to the vote well, for this. But uh, <clears throat> we'll have this discussion if there's nothing for Mr. Bishop or staff. They kind of. All right. We'll move on to. All right, Jamie, I want one more comment. May I? Okay. Okay. Right. We'll move on to number one on the The board will consider an appointment of three members to the EMS board of directors and by the Lawrence. As you see in your packets, there are three vacancies due to term expiration on May 31st. Um, the openings were advertised in the local newspaper and on the county website. The deadline for applications was May 30th. Um, in your packet should be applications from Pat Barbary, Scott Barton, Catherine Spence, Sherry Ellis, and Mary Jackson. You'll need to rank three, rank one to four. I'm sorry. And if you will put your name on the ranking form, we'll ask Conrad to tell us. You get to sign your ballot, date it, and also you go one, this best, two, next. Blah, blah, blah. Everybody understand? Yes. Okay. There's three openings for applicants. Number one being the height. Number one being your first place. See if it's right. Bishop, <laughs> 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 you want to tally them when we move on to the next? Four is all you want to check. I think we need to start over. Okay. Check my work. You want to start over? I think you need to start over because they've all left some out there. Okay. Go one through five, y'all. And y'all aren't at fault. Oh, you did yours? Yeah. Okay. I didn't get to look at yours yet. <laughs> well, look at it. I will. <laughs> you know, this is our math, so. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see.
Consider appointment of one member to the Taylor County Recreational Advisory TCRAB board as amended by. So, if you recall, um, the board members was reduced recently to a five member board. Um, it currently has one vacancy. We advertised in the local newspaper and on the county website. We received one application for Benjamin Nolan. Oh, Thank you. Motion to the point. No. Uh, motion and a second to appoint Mr. Nolan to Tim Crab on the mayor. Yeah. Uh, Aye. Aye. Uh, Aye. Two. Board to consider appointment of two members to the Tourism Development Council as agenda by Mr. Don Perez, Tourism Development Director. So, um, T. Crab, excuse me, PDC is a five member board and currently has two vacancies. Um, they were advertised in the local newspaper. The, um, the consideration are um, Ms. Perry Larson and Mr. Lynn Gray. And I believe it was voted on by the TDC to <coughs> recommend them. Right, you have two? Yes, sir. Can we vote on both of them at the same time or individually? And is there a ballot for that? No, because there's two vacancies. So there's two two applicants, two vacancies. Can I make a motion to appoint? I'll second that motion. Thank you. I have a motion to a second to appoint Mrs. Carrie Larson and Mr. Lee Gray to the Florida Development Council Board. All in favor? Aye. I would have to say no simply because of, I'm not in agreement with one person and I am with the other. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 <clears throat> the board to consider approval of a request to award bids for two demolition and reconstruction and one rehabilitation through the SHIP program and approve bid amounts over the limits of the local housing assistance uh, plan of the agenda funding grant strategy. Hey everybody, it's me again. Hey, Melanie. Um, we're asking for approval to move forward with the demolition and reconstruction of the home of Carolyn Florence. <laughs> the low bidder with Jerry Walker's construction is $144,880. The second one is Edwina Jackson. Her low bid was one thirty nine eight eight, and that was again Jerry Walker's construction. On the rehabilitation, James Chester, and we only received one bid on that of the people that looked at the house, and it was fifty seven thousand two ninety. Later, Bailey was one of the um, individuals that was out for bid and received. No bid from him. Um, part of the problem was he did not <clears throat> allow access to his home. We will be having a conference call with our consultant within the next couple weeks to decide how to move forward with Mr. Bailey. We will need you to approve if you decide to move forward the uh, amount of the bid because the maximum in our local housing assistance plan at this time is 135000 and rehab is 35000 So if you do approve moving forward, I will um, also need approval to go over the LCAP amount. We do have sufficient funding to do this project. The two demolition and reconstructions will go to 2022-23 SHIP funds, and the rehab will be 2023, 2024 time, which we will be continuing to watch. Yeah, I, I, I think the, all, the bid committee um, 
with Karen Reynolds, with our consulting firm, Lawrence Dickerson, <coughs> Jamie Evans, and myself. And all the documents were found to be in order. Mr. Big, I have a question. I didn't quite understand with the differential of 9,880 on one and 4,880 on one and 22,290 on the other. Now, where would that differential funding come from, did you say? It, it's all 100% ship funded. That's what the consulting firm projected to be. To be. Um, and I think that differential was a little bit confusing because it is what it is now. I mean, cost of mm -hmm. is so much higher. I, I look at our ship money and it used to be you know, we get three hundred fifty thousand dollars annually. We would do seven or eight projects, and now you're looking at the cost. We will have ended up doing three projects with the twenty two, twenty three money because we've already gave out down payments to one individual. So you can back up ten thousand dollars, but it used to be we could do all of these projects, and, and now we're the cost. Okay. We, we, we were with that money. But when I read the package and uh, was looking at this, it was uh, just a little confusing to me, but yes, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm clear now. It looks to me like So, um, Melody, it looks like these top two and, and the most. Uh, the funding goes to the highest two ranked projects on the, the confirmation of the back document. Is that correct? Yes, we have a ranking system, and if you are disabled, right. if you are eligible, then you get the funding. Okay. 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 Okay.
we'll work, yeah, we'll work with them on that to make sure there's no obstruction. There's usually green space that, you know, I'm assuming it will be somewhere, um, you know, maybe in the, the, the money box or the actual range itself. So as people are loading or unloading or paying, they can scan the sign and get the information. I won't have to, you know, walk to the other the boat ramp to scan it. You know, it would be an, an area accessible for everyone who uses the ramp. Call further questions. All in favor? Uh, I'll just just a comment. Yeah, I got a maybe option with the Sting Action Chamber to further those opportunities as their improvements come along with that. Uh, moving on. <clears throat> County administrators got informational items. Just wanted to um, advise the board that unfortunately the June 10th softball tournament was canceled. Um, I believe there was just a lack of teams to sign up, and that it can always happen. Um, I believe the next scheduled tournament is September, so we will certainly use the time in between now and September to work on our field and get everything in order for the, the fall sports season. Um, it has been quite a busy few months at the sports complex, um, but we can certainly use the time for some maintenance projects. <clears throat> yeah. Oh yeah, there's just not a lot. For some reason, doing that, no one really looking at all kids out there in other venues, there isn't really a lot. <laughs> Not, not just in our venue, I mean, just other venues as well. I don't know what, just maybe going into the summer, people taking a break. Maybe mm -hmm. everyone, we've all been wide open. I mean, playing ball, we played. I, I played our bunch of stuff about three years ago. I think we were going to be playing. We were going to be on vacation. We were going to play, but I mean, it's just, it, they canceled them. I just assumed that, you know, school was out and families were just ready to, to take a breather. I certainly understand that. And then as it heats up during the summer. Well, I'll say June 10th with a break. When you go to June 17th, everybody's back. Well, I can do that. I've got people asking me about that pickleball. As yes. a matter of fact, I saw one person um, yep. recently and he said, who are y'all that have that going? I'm driving all the way to. Wakala County to play, and I said, really? I said, we've been hearing a lot more about football mm -hmm. lately. Well, when we look at the football, when um, um, the walls of the old racquetball court were taken down at Southside, it was discovered that the there was an uneven height of the yeah. court. I don't, um, I don't think we can fit one court on that, but we're going to look at that. But that's something for y'all to consider when we discuss you know, a FERDAP grant application if you want to consider um, constructing a court somewhere. Why don't you just, why don't we consider at Southside just uh, tear, tear yeah. out what, what's there and, and do one, and is there room for two there? I believe there is, and I actually am working on the budget request now. I have a cost for the concrete and was just going to put it in the budget request for next year for Southside. Um, so we can just, I mean, I'd like to be able to offer um, an option now for folks, but I think we're going to have to do some, you know, have to start a construction project to really offer what people are asking for. I hope this is lasting. I hope it's not just a, you know, here today and gone tomorrow. It seems like a lot of people are interested now, and um, it's so foreign to me. I just... I hope that it's here to stay if we invest this kind of money into it. Well, from what I understand, the tenant, uh, there seems to be, um, I don't know if it's a renewed interest in tennis, but there is, uh, you know, wait, people are waiting to use the courts, tennis courts and pickleball at the sports complex. So I believe there's a need if we could construct an, another couple of courts somewhere. I know it would be appreciated by the public. I mean, those things are all going, and in some of those places, they're hosting tournaments for pickleball, yeah. having those options. So yes. it's very well attended. Yes. Uh, yeah. All right. All right. You got some results. Yes, I have, and we've gone over and checked it twice. Okay. Um, I hope I'm Ren CP Barbary um, Scott 
Barton and Sherry Ellis are the three. The ballots are here. This is the computation. That's public record. There you go. There's any comments and concerns from the public for non agenda items? Predecessors uh, have always allowed a lot of comment. I don't want, and, and as your attorney, I don't want anybody saying that you know that y'all did not. You know, you're my client. That, that y'all didn't listen to folks and so forth. The only comment I have is what happens. You know, you say that they have one time to comment, and then when the people come in and start commenting. And they don't tell their name, and they um, interrupt, and, and you know uh, that's. But actually, if you look at, at the folks that we had here tonight, with as many as we had, it was probably a very um, calm um, group compared to what I've seen in the past. Um, and and I always tell the story. Uh, I represented a client one time, and a, bless his heart, the commissioner looked right straight at me and said, I'm not listening to you, you lawyer, anymore. We've already decided, and you can sit down. And I was not happy. I was not happy. <laughs> I was paid to come to that meeting, you know, and, and give that, that, um, so, I, I never voted for him, I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> so it just, you know, it just, um, it just reminds me that, that uh, staff is a time I could take it because, you know, I signed up for this, good or bad, and you're always going to have somebody that's hostile or you're going to have somebody that's going to stand there and think they can keep mouthing off and talking anytime they want to and barking out, and, you know, we have that. Uh, so, and, and I think the chair, I think you did a, a, a good job of, um, of uh, keeping as much control as you could tonight. Uh, and thank you for that. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I just want to reiterate my appreciation for all those folks that have made contact. In, in the recent days about these items and future items for consideration. I think it's great to have involvement and support the public and whichever position that might be. I appreciate their views and their willingness to share that and, and for those who came out, I uh, encourage them to continue to be involved and keep up that kind of uh, direction in, in making forward progress. Thank you. All right. Over here. Sure.